the the tangent and velocity problems. So just a brief little section here, and they give a few examples. So this first one, you have a cardiac monitor is used to measure the heart rate of a patient after surgery. It compiles the, num the number of heartbeats after two minutes. When data in the table are graphed, the slope represents the heart rate, heart rate in beats per minute. Okay, so this is how many beats has been allowed, has uh, happened over the first 36 minutes. And what we want though is beats per minute, how many beats per minute. Now we could find the average by taking this and dividing it by 36, or by taking this and divided by 44, you could find the average number of beats. Um, another way to find the average is you could find from, so part A, basically what they're, they're saying is, what is the average from 36 to, from, from this time to 44, between 36 and 44 minutes, what was the um, average, what was the heart rate? or the average heart rate. Okay, so that's gonna be the number of beats that happened divided by the time elapsed. Okay, so if there was 200 and, um, if there was 2,548 2, beats at that point in time, and there was 3,089 beats in that point in time, then um, the number of beats that happened between 36 and 44 is going to be the difference in those two. Okay, and um, the number of minutes that passed is eight minutes. Okay, so you, here you have, um, so in the top we have beats, and then the, the denominator we have minutes. Okay, and so if you use a calculator, that is 67.8 beats per minute. Okay, so this word right here, this per, means that's what's in the denominator, per minute. So it's beats per minute. Okay, so that should be the answer to the first one. Okay, so then the second one, you're going from 38 to 42, from 38 to 42 from here to here. So the number of beats that happen, again, is gonna be the difference. And divided by the time elapsed, okay? Which was 42 minus 38. So that's gonna be four seconds. And here, um, I get uh, 67, okay, and then from 40 to 42, again, the number of beats is just going to be the difference um, divided by the a time elapsed. It's also 67, and then finally, the last one from 40, 44, 42 to 44, so that would be from here to here, um, 3,089 minus 2,955 over 44 minus 42. And I also get 67 for that. Okay, so any questions about this problem? I guess one thing that they want us to realize is this. Um, let me do this right here. Okay, so if we put if we put um, a time down here, so that's 36, 38, 40, 42, and 44. Um, and, and then we put, and we graph these numbers up here. So we'll say that's two, five, four, eight. And then, so that's a point there. And then here we've got um, two, six, eight, seven. 
say that's 2687. And then now here we have um, 2821 at 40. And then at 42, we have 2955. And then at 44, we have 3089. Okay. Um, so there's this term right here, which is the, the slope of the secant line. Okay, the the secant line for this this one right here, going from 36, 36 to 44, would be if you drew a line between those two points, that line would be the secant line, and then this would be the slope, 68, 67.8 approximately, and then. For this one right here, the green one, this part B from 38 to 44, that would be from here to here. And that, so the line joining those two points is the secant line. And that slope would be 67 approximately and so on. So each of these represents a line on the graph, on this graph right here. Okay. So that's a little bit of terminology, first of all. There's only one more exercise in this section, and that is this one right here. So um, we have a rock is thrown upward on the planet Mars with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Um, its height in meters uh, t seconds later is given by 10 t minus 1.86 t squared. Okay, so this 10, this 10 actually makes that a 10 right there. So really we don't need to think about this part of the problem anymore and only just concentrate on this formula at this point. And we're supposed to find the average velocity over the given time intervals. Okay, so now each of those right there the average velocity is given by the, the slope of the secant line. Okay, so this is the slope of the secant line, which is um, which is going to be given by y of uh, t two minus y of t one over T2 minus T1. Okay, so that's going from one to two. Okay, so it would be, in this case, we would plug in the two into here. That would be our Y of T1, just plugging it two. Not Y of T2, I'm sorry. Okay, so let me, so that's our T2, and this is our T1. Okay, and then we would subtract, according to that formula, it would be this one right here. So 10 times 1 minus 1.86 times 1 squared. Okay, and then all that would be divided by the second value of t minus the first one. So all that, okay? So that would be how you obtain the answer to the first part. Now, if you simplify that all out, you get Um, let's see, it says two decimal places, round to two, de two decimal places. So that's what you get running into two decimal places. Now, I want to show you how you can do this, all, all these, um, more quickly using Excel. So um, let me switch over to Excel to show you what, how to do this. Okay, so here I have a blank Excel sheet. You guys can see this Excel sheet, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, 
Okay. Um, now, dang, I, I, um, I'm going to make a column for the time too. So notice that if you, if you look back at, I didn't, there's one thing on the problem I didn't point out, which is what's kind of works very much to our advantage is that each of these starts from one second. So the part, the first one goes from one second to two seconds. And the second one goes from one second to 1.5 seconds. So all of them start at one second. So, so the T1s are all at one second. Okay, so the first one goes from one to two seconds. The second one goes from one to 1.5 and then so on. Okay, so they, so they're going from to one to two, one to 1.5, one to 1.1, one to 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 .01, and then one to 1.001. Okay, now maybe, so so there's so I mean if it didn't if it didn't if those were not the um, values then that would be no problem because I would just I could just create another column for that. Okay, but here I want to put the slope in, and I'm going to have it be so if you go equal and then for the numerator I'm going to have the second point which would be a two in this case minus um, the first value is one, okay? So just first value is one. That would, that's, oh, wait, wait, wait a second. No, I need to put the formula in. Okay, so the formula is 10 times A2. That's 10T minus 1.86 A2 squared. Okay, that's the first one. Minus, and then I've got 10 times one minus 1.86 times one. So that's putting the, the formula. That's, so that's all the denominator. And then for the, I mean, that's the numerator. So for the denominator, it's going to be A2 minus one for the denominator like that. So, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, that's like, how did that ever happen? Hold on. I think I didn't put a time sign right there. Maybe that's it. Let's try that. Okay, so 4.42 uh, is what I got. And then you can just, you can drag this down or you can just, if you double click, it also goes down to, to where you have the um, populated cells on the left like that. Okay, so that gives us all the answers. So, um, let's see here. it'll automatically round these for us if I make this to the right size. Okay, so those are all the answers right there. All the answers right there. Okay, um, let me go back to the, it said back to the problem. So all the answers are, uh, what, 5.35, 6.09, 6.26, and 6.28. Okay, so those are all the answers. Now, um, if you're kind of paying attention, then this formula right here, if if you look at the if you look at the graph, so here you're throwing it right here at, at one, right? And it's gonna be a parabola that, that faces down like that. This formula here. So there's a parabola, so it's like a parabola which, which uh, opens downwards because that minus sign right there. Okay, and at one second, you're like right there. So from one to two, you're taking this um, secant right here, and then and then you're cutting it back and going from one to one point five. 
and so on. And here, this is one to 1.001. That's like really, that's really close to to one. Okay, so you're taking um, these lines at different intervals and making this a lot smaller. And then the last one's really teeny tiny, really, like just right next to that point. Okay, you're taking those slopes right there. And part B, it says use your answer from part A to estimate the instantaneous velocity when t equals one. So the instantaneous velocity is going to be the limit as we, as these numbers go to one. And this is really, really close to one. So if you put down 6.28, then that's probably gonna, that's gonna give you the, the right answer. You could try 6.29, maybe that might work. I don't know, you can try. The 6.28 for sure works.